Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. In this video, what I want to do is take you through the steps to solve an Edison three-wire circuit to determine all line drops and voltage drops at our load. And then once we're finished that, we're actually going to break the neutral on this Edison three-wire and determine what happens in this circuit once that neutral is broken. Okay, so one of the things we need to remember about an Edison three-wire is we show over here that we have a 120 and a 120 volt source with a neutral in between. The job of that neutral, as we know, is to carry the unbalanced load between these two lines, but it's also to help us establish the 120 volts because what we need to remember is this circuit is fed from probably the secondary on a transformer, which is actually a 240 volt rated coil that's just center tapped. So I'm gonna draw that in here so that we can use that as we work through this circuit. Okay, so there's our center tapped this is our 240 volt supply over here. Here, we'll write it right here so you can see it. There we go. So we got 240 volts there, okay? Um, and we're going to put some polarities on our supply here. There we go, negative, positive, negative, positive. Because as we work through this, I'm gonna go step by step. The first step that we're gonna take a look at is step one. We're gonna plot the polarities of our circuit. Okay, that's going to help us determine what happens with values of current, things like that. And inevitably, when we get to this point with the neutral, it'll help us solve what's happening on the neutral as well. So moving around our circuit, this is our negative point. Negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, being this is our most positive point. We're dealing with electron flow here, where our current flows from the negative point of our source to the positive point on our source. Okay, so... We're going to take a look at what happens now, step two, with the neutral. Okay, because we know at this point right here we have 10 amps, and at this point right here we have 2 amps, we know that the difference between these two lines is 8 amps. So we know the current on our neutral is 8 amps. Now what we're going to do is determine what the polarities are on our neutral. Okay, neutral polarities. If I have 10 here and I only require two here, that means that I must be giving eight back or eight amps back to the supply. Okay, and according to electron flow, negative to positive, I'm gonna put it on both sides and I'll explain why in a minute when we actually get down to calculating load voltages. But for now, I'm gonna put that polarity on both sides of the neutral. Okay, so now we're at step three. We're gonna determine our line drops. Now our line resistance in this circuit is just indicated or represented by a resistor of 0.1 ohm, same with our neutral and same with our line 2 as well, um, but this would just be the resistance on a conductor due to its physical length. Okay, so if we have 0.1 ohms here and we know at this point we also have 10 amps flowing through this portion of the circuit, we can determine that we have one volt drop on this conductor. Down here, same thing, we know we have two amps flowing back this direction, and I have 0.1 ohms of resistance again. We can determine that we have 0.2 volts dropped on, on this conductor. On our neutral, we have eight amps flowing back to our supply, which means with my 0.1 ohm of resistance here, I can determine that I have 0.8 volts dropped on our conductor there as well. Okay, so we have our line drops. Step four, let's determine our load voltages. Okay, so I'm going to start off right over here. We're going to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to these and I know that a negative to positive, I'm going to go this direction around this portion of our circuit. Okay, I'm going to start with my positive 120 volts and I'm going to respect all the polarities that I encounter. Okay, so I'm going to go positive 120 minus 1 volt minus 0.8 volts gives me a voltage at this load of 118.2 volts. There's the voltage for my first load. Okay, my second portion of my circuit, we're going to do the same thing. We're starting with a negative, we're moving around to the positive portion of this circuit. And I, again, I'm going to respect the polarities that I encounter, whether it's additive or subtractive. In this case, we're going to start one, or sorry, positive 120, plus 0.8. Now this is why I like to put the polarities of the neutral on both sides. Um, it's just simply a physical or a visual indication to me 
uh, of what I need to do with that voltage when I encounter it, right? Because in this circuit, as we went around, that was actually a voltage drop. As we go through this circuit, we see that it's actually a voltage rise, so I need to add it to this 120 volts. So we have 120 volts plus 0.8 minus 0.2 gives us a voltage at this load of 120.6 volts. Okay, so if this were just an Edison three-wire calculation and we were asked to solve for load voltages, at this point we would be finished. If I had more loads connected on down here, I would just continue the same process. This would now become my new voltage rise if I had a load here. This would be my new voltage rise if I had a load here. If I had a 240 volt load connected on here, the addition of these two together would be my voltage rise. And I would just simply repeat the same process as I go through. Okay, so as I said, what we're gonna do with this video is determine what happens in a broken neutral situation. And we're gonna break it again, just down into a step-by-step -step, uh, method of approach for simplicity. Okay, so again, we gotta reach back to the point where we talked about the fact that this is a 240 volt supply, which means really if I'm looking at the outside of this circuit, this is just a 240 volt series circuit around the outside. Okay, and we can actually prove Kirchhoff's voltage law before we break the neutral and make sure that we're on the right path here. If I start off with my positive 240, and I go around a closed loop, I know the algebraic sum around any closed loop must equal zero according to Kirchhoff. So positive 240, minus one, minus 118.2, minus 120.6, minus 0.2 should bring me back to zero. Okay, so Kirchhoff's voltage law is proved right there. Now what we're gonna do is break the neutral. Okay, so broken neutral can come from many different things. Uh, for example, maybe a splice comes apart maybe it becomes disconnected back at the supply. Either way, we've lost this neutral, which for us means we've actually lost all of this in the middle here as well. We've lost these 120 volt references, okay? We've lost any type of current on that neutral. And what else disappears, actually before we do that, sorry, one of the last things we're gonna need to do before we move to a broken neutral is we need to determine what the values of resistance of are each of these loads, okay? So, step one, let's say determine load resistance. And we can do that because based off the previous circuit with the neutral connected, I have 118.2 volts at this load and 10 amps flowing because of it, which means if I apply Ohm's law to this calculation, I have 118.2 divided by 10 amps gives me an actual physical resistance on this load of 11.82 ohms. Okay, down here I can apply the same thing. I know that when my neutral was connected, my load was drawing two amps at 120.6 volts, which means if we apply again Ohm's law, we have our 120.6 divided by two, we should see a value of resistance here around 60.3 ohms. Okay, and these numbers are important when we step into our broken neutral because everything in this circuit disappears except for physical values of resistance. Okay, so we have this 0.2 volts disappears. All the currents disappear. This 0.1 or 1 volt rather disappears. Even the current that was drawn by my load, it drew that current because of the way it was connected into this circuit. Okay, so all of these values of current disappear. Even our voltages of our load disappear because they were reliant on that neutral to keep these loads as balanced as possible. Okay, so we now have nothing left in our circuit except for our 240 volt supply that we're connected to and our physical values of resistance in our components. So the next step that we need to do, we need to find a new resistance total. And as I mentioned, this is just a series circuit. To determine resistance total in a series circuit, all we're gonna do is go around and add up all our values of resistance. 0.1 ohms plus 11.82 ohms plus 60.3, plus 0.1 should give us a value of resistance now of somewhere around 72.32 ohms, okay? Now that we have that value of resistance, this would be the total resistance or really the total impedance in this circuit. I can apply my Ohm's law and figure out step three, what my new value of current is, okay? And again, it's a series circuit. Once we find that value of current, we know that we can apply it everywhere, okay? It's the same current at every one of these components. So Ohm's law, again, 
we have 240 volts is our total voltage. 72.32 ohms is our total resistance in this circuit. And if I run those in Ohm's law, I should end up with a new value of current in my circuit of roughly, we should see about 3.319 amps. And again, that's going to be everywhere in this circuit. So step four, now that we have a new value of current, we can apply Ohm's law again to determine what the voltage drops at each one of our loads is going to be. Okay, before we do that, I want to look at this circuit and talk to you about something called the voltage divider principle. Okay, if we look at a series circuit, we know that this 240 volts is going to have to divide proportionally amongst these loads. Okay? And if we think about voltage, it's a pressure, it's going to take more pressure to come through this 60.3 ohms than it is this 11.82 or even this 0.1. So if we think about the voltage divider as the amount of voltage dropped on a component is directly proportional to the amount of resistance, okay, it helps us kind of determine without even having to do math which of these loads should I see the highest value of voltage at? 0.1 ohms, 0.1 ohms, those are pretty small. I'm probably not going to see a whole lot of voltage dropped across these. 11.82, it's bigger than these ones, but with respect to this load, it's relatively small. So I can kind of think about this and make an educated guess and say, I'm going to assume that my 60.3 ohm load is going to have the highest value of voltage dropped across it after I do my calculations. Okay, so let's run the numbers and see. We have 0.1 times 3.319. We should see about 0.332 volts here. Same thing down here. We should see about 0.332 volts here. At our 11.82 ohm load with 3.319 amps, we should see a voltage of around 39.231 volts. And with a ohmic value of 60.3 and a current value of 3.319, we should see around 199.793 volts across this load here. Now, if we think about that, we have drastically under voltage this load, which can be sometimes just as bad as what we've done to this load. We have drastically over voltage this load. I now have almost 200 volts across this load. And I know what you're thinking, how do we have such a high voltage across here? It's because if we remember the 240 volt supply is going to distribute itself proportionally amongst these components. So if we were to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law again to this circuit and start at our positive 240 and go all the way around the outside, it should equal zero in a closed loop. Okay, so we start at positive 240 minus 0.332 minus 39.231 minus 199.793 minus 0.332 again should equal zero, okay? So hopefully this has helped you uh, in determining how to solve an Edison three-wire circuit as well as moving forward into a broken neutral circuit as well. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.